Welcome to my white hat series. Thank you for coming along. I'm sure you want to get into it right away. Today we're pulling apart some more code. So if you want to see how it's done and see what tools I use, stay tuned till the end. And thank you very much for finding me on YouTube, looking me up, and hopefully you enjoy the rest of my series. Mickey J's white hat. Let's pull things apart. And today we're talking about PDFs. Yes, PDFs are JPEGs. They can contain viruses of all things. So today let's pull apart a PDF. And we've received a PDF in an email. Um, as with all things, I make sure that with my emails that uh, I'm not actually previewing things automatically. It's turned off. I always make sure that nothing can run. Nothing can go out and reach out and do anything on the web that it shouldn't do and make sure it can't touch anything on my system. So preview must always prompt. Now, with this email, we've got this records.pdf file attached. Do we trust it? Do we want to go ahead and open it? I send a copy of it to my iPhone. Um, so, or I wouldn't use an Android, but um, the reason for that is on an iPhone, all of the print and run, all the applications and things like that are actually sandboxed nothing can run in another memory space and access another program. On an Android, not so much the same. I wouldn't go sending it to your friend's Android. He may get infected with some sort of Android-specific virus. iPhones, I'm not going to say they're foolproof, but I use as my first line, first line of defense. So I open that up, and here we have a records.pdf file, which is going off to ASIC. It's not really going off to ASIC, but it looks like it's going off to ASIC. Yeah. Now here we have the header for the email. I'm going through that and looking for key bits of information. First thing you spot is that the reply to address and the from address are actually two different addresses. This might give you a bit more of a clue behind the scenes as to how this got to you or may give you a clue as to its legitimacy. If we have a bit more of a look down further, we've got some IP addresses and things like that. We can see some SPF information. We can see, obviously, all this information they've tried to use to get through to my mailbox, and bypass any anti-spam and things like that. Obviously, in these headers, you can get things like the sender's um, time zone, and also you can get information about their IP address. If they use webmail, you can see what IP address they were logged into the webmail from. And of course you can see what mail client they're using and you can get a bit of detail about how it got to you. Okay, the next step I normally take is I open up that PDF as a notepad document. I can check to see it is really a PDF. Yes it is, the header is a PDF header. If I have a look at it, I can see there's a stream in there. The stream would normally be a graphic or some sort of binary image or something in there. Um, I'm looking for anything obvious like URLs, any links that shouldn't be there. I can see what program they used to create this with. As I scroll through it, um, I can't see a lot of information in there. It must be mostly graphic. You've already seen it. I opened it on my iPhone. Yes, it was mostly graphic. Um, you can pick up early on if there's any URLs in here, any traps. This is a great way to look into your file without running anything and causing any chaos. At this point in time though, I can't see anything that's obvious that's an exploit or a virus. Loading that up through Virus Total. Virus Total says, hey, this is not a virus. Hmm, so far I'm feeling pretty good about this file. Let's load it up through pdfexaminer.com. And on here, we're able to analyze this document. And I found quite a few PDF viruses this way, or exploits, using this great tool. 
So it's broken up each of the little objects inside the PDF. You can scroll through each object, they're highlighted in green, and you can find out if any of these objects uses a known exploit. So we're gonna just select one of them here. You can see the decoded information, you can see the raw information, any parameters that are passed, and of course, any exploits that are being used. So if we have a look at this one at the moment, there's no exploits in that particular object. I can take the time and scroll through each one. I can also go through and have a look at all the code. Much the same as what I saw in Notepad. I can see it's an Adobe Stream. In this particular case, I can scroll through and I can see a few URLs in use. Um, I can go to other objects and have a bit of a poke around and see what the deal is. Here I can see that it was made on a Hewlett Packard computer or maybe a Hewlett Packard printer or something. I can see a little bit more information about the code. I can see some back end URLs. Nothing at this point that makes me think this has got a virus in it. But useful tool just to show you how to pull it apart and be cautious. There are a number of these PDF examination type tools out there on the web. I've found this one to be one of the better ones. So I highly recommend it. Again, it breaks it down into exploits and all the rest of it. So no exploits found in this document. If we go on the parameters, there's not pass, passing too many parameters to it. And obviously it's quite simple to use this tool. It makes quite easy sense on how to use it. So it's not complicated at all. Under the general PDF info, you can see all the generic information about this document. You can see what kind of PDF it is, whether it's a real PDF, whether it's something in disguise. It actually tells me this is a version 1.5 real PDF. So back to that PDF. This is it now. I'm trusting it because I've opened it up on my trusted PC. It's in a DMZ. And of course, I'm uh, not doing anything stupid here. I've already checked it for viruses. There's a link, and here's that link. Now don't go click the link. Whatever you do, don't go click the link. It could do all kinds of crazy dangerous things. In my environment, as I trust it, um, because I'm going to be protected on this machine, then I am going to click that link and see where it goes. Hopefully it provides us uh, some more information for yet another video. So, in this case, um, you would not obviously allow, in my case, I'm going to allow it. Let's see what happens. Hey, I can only damage my machine once, can't I? Well, hey, look at that. It's a known ransomware. Website has been blocked by my Trend Micro. And here we go. I'm now looping through all the Trend Micro protections, clamping on one at a time. So my URL protection kicked in. My desktop antivirus kicked in. Uh, maybe I should have tried this example with my antivirus turned off. Right, let's get the, uh, the URL that we had and let's pop that into virus total don't forget virus total not only can scan files but can scan websites as well goes back to many known databases of dangerous sites uh, i happen to know this is a zero day site so the site's been put in the dns fresh it's brand new i doubt very much we'll get too many hits on it but somebody may have seen this before us so let's put it into virus total let's see if we get a search result and let's see if the community have got any information for us about what that particular ransomware was. Here we go. Nothing has found anything on that site yet. All right, now we know Trend Micro knows about it because it blocked me. It may have been done by the real time protection or the web shield, who knows what detected it. So we really need to find out whether well, Trend Micro have they got listed in their safety safety center. So again, I love this site, global.sitesafety.trendmicro.com. Um, anything that is known about will come up on this particular site. If it's a brand new website, brand new URL, only just been submitted into DNS, Trend Micro are not automatically going to go and accept it. So here we go, we've got virus total and we've got trend micro up against each other. 
And Trend Micro has observed it's a new domain. That's helpful. We know it got created just recently and ASIC wouldn't go doing something like that. And it's an untested domain. So we're going to get this thing tested. Uh, at this point in time, it must have been the uh, real-time scanner that caught that uh, ransomware. So that website's probably still live and probably still farming out ransomware. Dare say it's an executable, it's pulled down. So at this point, the, so at this point, the PDF is no more than just a container. It's just got a link in it. It uses social engineering to get you to uh, click on that link and go to a website and download some ransomware. There's no exploit in the actual PDF. So with all these things, I always check the email header. I would always open a PDF in Notepad first, just to make sure that it looks like there's nothing nasty I can spot straight away. I always turn off that preview mode. If it looks okay, I send it through to an iPhone. If you don't have access to an iPhone, um, then yeah, read on. Let's go on to the next thing. So I run it through Rise Total, and I do the file and any URLs in the document. Run it through PDF analysis, look for any exploits. And then I check it with Trend Global Security and obviously with your antivirus that's installed on your machine before you go trusting any of these things. PDFs can carry viruses. So, did this give you some clarity, some focus? You now know a bit more about how to pull these things apart? You're getting a little bit more into frame? Well, stay tuned. Subscribe. Next video, give feedback. And the little bell. Then you know when I send another video up. Have a great day.